Everybody, how you doing? It's me, Robert, uh, 5 volt detonator, Robert. And today I'm going to be making another detonator, but I'm going to be making my uh, new version that uses protected CR123A batteries. Um, if you watched, these are the protected CR123As. I use 10 Gs. They have a protection circuit on both ends. I like them a lot. If you watch my videos before, I've showed you how to make what I call the detonator. It's basically a variation of Mad Dog's uh, Magnum. It's made out of a flashlight like this, little $3 flashlight you can get um, online or at AutoZone or a lot of different places. Uh, produces a real good hit of vapor. Um, and it's 5 volt consistent. I use a regulator so it's uh, a little bit different than some of the mods out there. A lot of the mods stack two, two batteries and then they uh, <clears throat> and then they uh, you know they're above 6 volts because two of these batteries even though they're 3 volts each at full charge they're a little bit above 6 volts when stacked together and then they slowly drop off. The difference uh, between those mods and the detonator, uh, the 5 volt detonator, is that uh, my, my mod hits 5 volts consistently every time I push the button, no matter where the batteries are at, fully charged or almost dead. Right before they're dead, it'll just stop hitting. And uh, I have two LEDs on this one. I have a red one that lets you know that it's on. There's a power lockout switch on the bottom. There's a switch here on the bottom and then the other LED is green and it shows you when you're pushing the button the detonator I'm going to be making in this video is going to have a flashing green LED that comes on when I push the button and it's going to have a red LED that's on like this when the power's on and I'm going to be making it, uh, like I said, out of this uh, $3 flashlight. Some of the tools I'm going to use, basic wire cutters. Um, I like this. It's a wire stripper. You can buy this for about three, three to five bucks. Scissors. I have my Texas Instrument regulator. This regulates anywhere from uh, 12 volts down to down to exactly five every time um, I bought a lot of those and I paid a lot of money for those so uh, if you have questions about where to get them you can call me but um, and uh, let's see what else I use Radio Shack push buttons right now I have some better buttons coming in the mail but I feel like making one today so I've been using these buttons for a long time um, I like them they're sub mini push buttons <clears throat> couple good points let's see here's the button a little close-up of it you'll see it more in the in a minute here what else oh yeah my 510 connector everything I do is based on 510 atomizers uh, these connectors are available at mad vapes alt smoke couple different places let's see what else soldering iron of course I like to use a heat gun because I heat shrink all my connections. Um, that's real important. A couple features about the detonator uh, I could tell you about. For one thing, um, I know some people had a, one guy had a problem. A little bit of juice from the atomizer somehow got down even though it's a sealed, uh, sealed Addy um, connector. This Addy connector is sealed. It's got a grommet from the the inside is positive, the outside is negative, and some of the juice got down into the batteries. The way I make these, I'm going to take you through the whole process today. Um, the way I make them, it's impossible for the juice to get down through this lump of JB Weld into the battery compartment. So that's a good thing in my opinion. Um, and uh, like I said before, I made these out of CR2s. I had one vent and I had a cheap CR2 from eBay, the bright blue ones. It vented in my pocket and uh, ended up burning my legs. Some people saw pictures of that. These ones are a lot safer. 
So I've decided to only make these from now on and I want everyone else to know uh, how to make them. I'm a hobbyist. I sell a few of these. If you want to buy one, um, you can contact me through uh, YouTube and ask me how much. They're going to be about 65 to 70 bucks, depending if you have a, a flashing LED like this one. Also, uh, a couple different things. Uh, there's low ohm. There's low ohm atomizers out there. Low resistance um, atomizers out there. I think they're called. And um, since this does use two CR123s now, it can also fit an 18650, I believe. I haven't made one yet, so don't hold me to that. But if you want to use an, uh, a single 18650, I can make you one without the regulator. So then you'll just be getting 3.7 volts, and you put that uh, low resistance uh, atomizer on there, and you'll be getting a simulated 5 volts. But this is going to be true 5 volts with the regulator. Um, I've also talked about making one with two buttons. Um, you know, if you want one of those, I could probably make one of those too. I've made two button, uh, two button detonators before when they were inside. Uh, another thing, this is a lot easier to make now because I only drill two holes. Uh, all my electronics are up above the rim of the flashlight now. So um, there's a lot less drilling involved even though I still use a drill for one part of it and I still drill vent holes um, just in case anything goes wrong so let's get started first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your flashlight take out this little battery pack chuck it away you can always use those uh, little uh, cheap uh, uh, AAA batteries for something. I don't know what. I use them for my remote control car radio, which I'll probably be playing with on camera later because I just can't get enough of it. Now the way you want to, what you have here is you have a, a flashlight with your, your, your LEDs in the flashlight up here and your circuit board in there. We're going to be using that circuit board. So what I do is I like to take a socket, stick it right in there like that, put it on the ground, and it knocks right out you should be able to knock that right out no problem the lens will come off hold on to that because you might need it in a minute and then you just push out the circuit board with the LEDs on it next thing you're gonna do take your pliers go ahead and break off some of that chrome uh, looking plastic that's around the LED. Throw that away, you don't need it. Now we'll go into zoomed in mode. So everybody can see what I'm doing. Now. <clears throat> right here you've got your circuit board with your LEDs on it. You got this spring and let me explain something to you real quick this spring is attached with a solder lump right here you see that okay that is positive the springs positive on the inside of the spring there is another solder lump that is negative <clears throat> now this one's positive that's attached to the spring and the inside ring of solder lumps is also all positive the outside ring of solder lumps is all negative. So you have the negative one in the middle of the spring, negative on the outside ring, and you have the positive one attached to the spring, and positive on the inside ring of lumps going around. Each of these LEDs, of course, has a negative and a positive attached to it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rip out Zoom out a little bit. I just take my pliers and I rip out all the. Wow, <laughs> look at that. Well, you can't see what I'm looking at, but something interesting is happening here in my house. Yeah, okay. You're doing good over there. 